hi everyone and welcome back welcome to my another video and in this video we are going to talk about sqlize so sqlize it used to be one of my favorite orm back in those days uh, like maybe four years back i used to do a lot of sqlize with the express and uh, nest js and then these uh, new pair of orms came into the pictures next uh, prisma type orm and i'm started using them but after a long time, I'm looking at the SQLize back and I think this has been revamped a lot. There is a uh, lots of new latest releases are there and API reference. We will talk about this. So what we are going to do in this video is how to work with SQLize with Nest.js. So we have a Nest.js APIs and I wanted to use SQLize as a interfacing layer between my database and my Nest.js APIs. So SQLize here you can use SQLize as same as the type ORM with the different database SQLite, Postgres, uh, MySQL, Oracle data, database and all. So what we are doing in the SQLize it's all about defining the models like defining the entities in the type ORM. So here we define the models and once the model is defined you can use that model to do the operations like user.create, update, delete, uh, all these different operations user.find so first what we did is we created a model sqlize.define so sqlize is actually a connection object and here we are defining the model with that and then we started doing find all and all so i will just go to api reference to see the the changes this is deep down okay this thing might help so this is how we are create, getting started is simple we just need to install sqlize and what pair of things we are going to use for postgres we need to install both these modules and for connecting to the database we need to get the sqlize instance and pass the your connection uri here like if it is a sqlite in memory database if it is we have postgres database running somewhere on the docker pass the whole url you got the sqlize instance and then you can just uh, get the database instance from it so there are different ways of doing it like the option one option two option three option three is mostly we use is okay we specify all the different attributes database username password but i'm more comfortable by passing the whole url which contains everything i don't need to pass a username password database name separately this is the username, database username, password and database name, host and the port 5432, right? So, and uh, what you can do is if uh, you want to test the connection, then sqlize.authenticate. If everything good, we are connected and then you can also close the connection if there is any, any error. So, sqlize is all about works on the models, con concept of the models. If I talk about that model so this is how you will connect then models basic so this is how we are creating the models so this example it is using sql sqlite in memory but this is the model which we are going to define either you use a postgres mysql and all models will always be there sqlize.define the model and all the model attributes like we define the mungu schema type orm entities similarly in the a sqlize we are defining the models and you can also extend the models and all like user extends model and then we are initializing the properties like first name last name it has okay i will not go into that much details here so how we are doing query so once you got the model like you can start uh, using dot create and pass your whole object so this is your a sqlize model right user dot create and return me this particular field once the the creation is done simple select query await user dot find all so it is just doing a select star from this uh, model dot find all and give me only these two attributes model dot find all give me uh, i mean this is this is the alias right foobar as badge and quacks from this particular table okay so these are the finders find by primary key find one find or create find and count 
associations i mean uh, i have covered these associations in my sql is in very depth like associations will always be there because it's a relational database so what we always have is one to one one to many many to one many to many right so there are some selectors which we need to use in sql is has one it's for one to one belongs to is for i think one to many belongs to many is uh, i think one to many uh, here we can see has one a has one that means one to one a and b a belongs to b means a belongs to b that is also kind of one to one has many a means a and b has a one to many a belongs to many that means uh, it's many to many belongs to many so this is how we define the associations between two different entities i mean uh, if you are interested you can come to this particular link and try to explore the different associations because nowadays i'm i'm more into type orm so you you need to get the job done either you use a type orm either you use an x but that should be whatever you are writing should be clean enough right so here this is how we are running the queries sqlize.query and you can put the row query because all the orms also provide an interface where you can uh, just pass your own query because some people love sql and i mean everybody loves sql and if you are having hard time in writing this you through the these object entity classes you can just write a sql query await sql.query and put your sql query that will do the job okay so i will go to the migrations that is another important part transactions and migrations transactions is like you can see sqlize.transaction it's kind of a similar concept i see everywhere sqlize.transactions and in the try catch you start doing your operations once you are done with all the operations you just need to pass this transaction as a second argument that means all these create insert are associated to this transaction once you are done await transaction.commit otherwise await transaction.rollback and finally transaction.release so this is how we are initializing the transactions that's just another way if you don't want to pass the transaction as a second argument you can do it something like this sqlize.transactions and in this callback you perform all your operations and return the user i mean whatever you wanted to do okay so this is somewhat about transaction and then do we have somewhere migrations So there should be something on the migration. I'm just checking. Yes, this is SQLize CLI is also provide a migrations. So npx SQLize CLI in it, it will give you this configurations config dot JSON file that contains. Okay, for development use this or uh, environment variables for test use these environment variables for productions these use these environment variables. Okay, it's like same stuff which we see all around. And uh, SQLize CLI provides us all these options uh, DB migrate, uh, DB seed, creating first seed is something like this. Seed generate, right? Running the, running the seed, DB seed all, undoing the seed. So I think we can do some uh, play around with this. So type of uh, SQLize provide a migration APIs also. I mean, most of the time what I end up doing is I put the SQL here instead of uh, this object model and all query interface dot create table person and here you can specify something like this but most of the time I'm more interested in using just writing a SQL here like query interface dot query and put your okay create table table name with these set of columns and in the down also we do say same kind of stuff I think that should be covered here this is all about query using a tire sqlize apis because even if you wanted to create a table using uh, migrations you should use a sqlize api like query interface dot create table instead of just putting the the raw sql and you can also use this sqlize rc file if you don't want to use this config json you can just put this and uh, you can just put this sqlize rc file which contains okay where is your cedars path migrations path where is your main config file so here config file is inside database.json inside config i have a models inside db models db cedars and db migrations 
So sometimes what happens is you want to have a dynamic configurations, right? And you wanted to resolve the path. So in that case, you can use, you can just generate a dynamic configurations from config.js. Okay, so this is what my config.js looks like. Here I'm getting the values from the process.env because I don't need to hard code all these things. I can specify my database URL password and all. And then I can write this config.js file, which will give the configurations to the SQLize. Okay, we, I think we, we are going to use this one. Okay, so let's let's see this. Uh, let's see this in the action and we will try to understand more. So uh, here we have a SQLize RC file. This is my setup because I want to have a dynamic configuration. That means I want to have this uh, config.js file. So what I you need to have a SQLize RC file that will tell you wh where is your seeders path, where is your config file. I mean the config.json we don't have. So we have a config.js, but we need to tell SQLize where to find it. So for that we have a SQLize RC. And here we are specifying where to find the seeders, migration path and a config path. So that is inside config.ts and that is inside source database and here I have a config.ts. So here I have specified all different environment variables for my development, for my test production. And what I need is the dialect means the Postgres username, password, database, host and port. Okay, so these are different environment variables I am passing. So this is how we can manage the environments. .env.config will populate things from process.env and will give me the development object when I request for it. So for SQLize, there is already a module available, SQLize module, Nest.js SQLize. I mean, I think this has been released uh, recently. So this is Nest.js SQLize. And this is how we are doing it. I mean, we just need to NSJ SQLize, SQLize TypeScript and SQLize. I can read more about this. How to get started. Okay, so what I need to do is because at the end what we need is type or a module dot for root and for root async. It's a similar SQLize module dot for root and we are specifying all the models and all the database parameters which are like dialect, host, port, username, password, right? It's like simple. And then if you want to access a particular service, this is how you can inject a SQLize. And from the end, this is how we are defining the models. SQLize TypeScript is giving us all these annotations, more columns, tables and uh, model. And this is how we are defining the models. So it's giving me the same feeling which I have with the type ORM, right? So here if I so SQLize module dot for root, you just specify all your models which you wanted to use and then let's say I have a user module. So I need to just use SQLize module dot for feature to tell the uh, nest CS that I'm, I'm going to consume the user repository in this user module and then inside a user service you can inject a model like this and then user model dot find all user model dot find one. I mean this document is really nice and it's updated earlier we were not having this kind of a module and uh, we were not having these kind of entities also where we can specify the relationships like this so has many these are the notations we have to define the relationships and if you want to auto load all the entities auto load all the models which will i think synchronize with the database also so you can use auto load models and synchronize true okay so this is how you will play with the transactions which I discussed transaction host and migrations using SQLI CLI. So there are two different ways. So this is one of the way uh, in which you are creating the models classes and SQLI module dot for root we are using like type or a module dot for root for root async. I mean we can also make a, a our custom module which is returning us a SQLI module dot for root async. I think there should be a way of doing it. Now, if I just see the another example of it, I mean, I what I did is I'm using the legacy way of doing it. It's not the something different because I have this config JSON, right, which contains all the environment variables like for development, productions and all. 
and based on the environment i can just give you the config object and that config object you can use to create a sqlize instance so this is sqlize you are getting and here i am just adding all the models which i have a user post blog and all and sqlize.sync if you wanted to synchronize your models with the database then you will do it otherwise return the sqlize so i'm creating this custom provider database provider and this database provider i will expose so that you can use this database provider in your modules so let's say if i have a user user service i can uh, first of all inside a module i would be using this user provider you can see i created uh, this custom provider okay even before that how we are doing it in the app module i have added this database module that, that means i am providing the sqlize provider everywhere in the whole app so that any, any anyone can use a sqlize providers because this is what uh, the sqlize provider database provider is giving us this is the provide and this is the value We're using use factory okay and then if i go to any particular module let's say user user module we are using this user provider which is nothing but the same thing here we have user repository and the value is the user entity and user entity is the same like because here we are using these uh, annotations like annotation table column and even we can define the relationships so this is somewhat similar i mean uh, either you initialize a sqlize module like this or you create a custom provider so here in this example we are using this custom provider and then once you have it inside a user service you can inject a user repository and then once you have a repository you can access these things so to, 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 here we are creating this user provider in the post also we might be using some provider post repository so this is how we are actually uh, injecting the providers making the provider available and then accessing the data using repository that is the one way and the another way is this sqlize module dot for root and then add because if you are more into type orm stuff and you don't want it to write these custom providers then that's fine you can just use sqlize module dot for root and then at the module level you can just use sqlize module dot for feature like in the type orm module also we do type orm module dot for feature and pass the entity that means now you can use a user repository in this user service and that's what we are doing i'm just injecting the model and i'm i'm able to freely use this user model so either you use a repository or the instance of the model so i mean i can migrate this to this example also using the sqlize module because that's also really nice or this is the current version which i'm showing you in the code base right so you can do it either way whatever you feel like doing but this is how we play with the sqlize now what i will do is i in the next video i will revamp this code base a little bit and then in the next video we will compare both the approaches the provider way or just using the sqlize module the new nestjs sqlize module to initialize the connections